And, you know, many of us perhaps at times find ourselves less compassionate than we should be. And especially with people close to us, especially with people that we spend time with day in, day out, you know, it might be easy. Like say you, you see, there's, maybe you have a friend and you see them once a year or not very often. And they tell you this and you're, you know, you're maybe you're having a cup of coffee in a cafe and they tell you they're feeling stressed and you're going to, you know, you don't see them very much. You can give them a lot of time and attention and you can be there. You can be Mr. Understanding, Mr. Caring, Mr. Kind, Mr. Compassionate. But when it's someone you live with day in, day out, day out, it's totally different. You know, you're like, gosh, why, you, why, why, you, why don't you just stop being like that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. Well, what it is is that there are a few different things at play. One is that the way to how do I begin? There are physical factors, there are psychological factors, okay, at play. If it's someone you live with, like um, a family member, someone you're in a relationship with, parents are, are usually big um, trigger um, potential triggers. Um, if it's someone you live with, especially, you see, then there, there, there are aspects of your practical aspects of your life. Like, for example, um, are you tired? Have you had a long day? And this is coming at you at the end of a long day. Have you, have you, are you sleep deprived? Are you hungry? These sort of factors become more important. So that's one aspect of it. Are you looking after yourself? Are you sleep deprived? And I'm not just talking to you, Muslim. I'm talking to everyone on the call, right? You know, are you, in, are you stressed out about something else already? And then someone else is coming to you. And the thing is, if you're exhausted, if you're run down, um, you know, if whatever, if you're hungry, all these different f factors, um, then it might be that you're phys physically or physiologically not able to actually take on anything else right now. Um, I'm a pretty <laughs> understanding, and compassionate person and I'm pretty good at actually um, you know being there for people but I know if um, I've got you know 101 things going on at once and then someone comes at me with that 102nd thing you know I would not deal with it as well you know and I'm saying 101 things just to make myself feel better it's probably if I'm dealing with three things at once and someone comes with a fourth thing then I <laughs> You know, but let's let's go back to 101 things. Make make Tom feel good about who he is. Because <laughs> the reality is, as body minds, right, on the level of body mind, we're limited. The body mind is limited. It has limited capabilities. If someone tells 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 you to pick up a load of things and you're holding all these things, and it's just about you can just about carry it, and then someone dumps something else on top of you, you're going to collapse. You see, that's the body mind is limited. Your psyche is limited. So it might be, are you just reaching your physical and psychic or psychological limitations as a human being? In which case you need to protect yourself. You need to stop that person you need, um, from putting that extra weight on you that you can't bear right now. So it might be that that's a rational response in a way in the sense that it's you it might be your body mind telling you you can't take this anymore you need to look after yourself okay that's one aspect the second aspect is that most of us have our own psychological traumas big traumas little traumas and everything in between traumas right and the second aspect which um and this side of things often falls away with liberation. And this is being a bit more serious, talking about myself again, this is why I'm pretty good at these things. It's got psychological stuff isn't there. But what happens when someone comes at you and they're anxious or they're afraid, they can trigger your own traumas. And so if you haven't dealt with stuff, they can trigger that undealt with stuff in you. And then that can set off a panic because you feel like you can't cope with them because of the way they make you feel. And what it actually is, is you can't cope with your own feelings or the aspects of your feelings that you can't cope with. Now it's important to discern between the two because it could be that actually you can't take anything more on or this person's being unreasonable with you. 
they're having a go at you too much and it's not right to be understanding you see in which case you have to put up a boundary and enforce that boundary that's a healthy thing to do but if it's just your own shit your own psychological shit that's being stirred up here that's coming up that's been triggered then you have an opportunity to grow and heal through this interaction maybe not at the time maybe afterwards but you have an opportunity to heal you have to trust the other person you have to say gosh they're not able to cope i might be able to cope in that situation but they can't you know for me it might not be such a big deal but for them they're obviously finding it a big deal so you've just got to trust them and then if you look carefully at your own life, you'll see that you're, you have things like this as well, which you find difficult to deal with. But other people don't. You know? One simple example is something like public speaking. Some people don't have a problem with public speaking. Other people find it very, very difficult. And there's obviously the whole spectrum in between. And there are, things, there are all sorts of things like this. You have mental blocks with all sorts of things. So... I've been married for a number of years now and my wife and I, we have that we have, we have different things we're good at and different things we're less good at. And there's some things that I find quite difficult and then she just finds that very easy. You know? And at first it was difficult for her to understand that about me. And there are other things the other way around, which I find very easy and she finds very difficult. But a part of being in a partnership or relationship is to trust the other person's feelings. When they say they find it difficult, say, okay, I don't fully understand it, but you find it difficult. I'm here to help. And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you that you find it difficult. You just, and sometimes you're not always going to be in that headspace. Sometimes you think, oh, why the fuck can't you just get over it? Because, you know, <laughs> it's such a little thing. And then you have to remind yourself, they're not you. They're better than you at some things. And they're not as capable as you in other things. And that's just the way it is. And you can learn from them and they can learn from you. You try and see the things that you're not able to deal with that other people can deal with. There must be some things, right? So we can empathize that way. So what you'll find then is that person, generally speaking, have some kind of trauma around that area of the life. And that thing that you, is trivial for you is actually traumatizing them. Okay, and they might not be aware of that. They might not, a lot of people are not aware of how their psychology works, so they all just think it's difficult, they'll find it very distressing or very anxiety provoking. They won't realize the reason they find it so anxious necessarily is because um, they have been traumatized at a younger age about something along these lines, and this is bringing that up for them. So it's a difficult situation for you in that sense. You know? But this is, this is what happens in pretty much all relationships to a greater or lesser extent. And when it doesn't happen in relationships, it's either because the relationship is exceptionally good, which is very rare, or it's because both people are suppressing and then it blows up later on in a different way. But this is an opportunity for growth for you. And it's an opportunity for you to listen to the other person. And to and what you can what you actually will be able to do is if you can listen to them and hear their pain. Yeah. Hear their pain, feel their pain, and allow them to heal their pain. You'll actually help them through this. Because they're obviously finding it difficult, traumatic. Because it's a deeper trauma. And so you have to realize that person you're with is in pain. They're suffering. They don't necessarily understand what's going on. And just being a loving presence for that person, if you can, is going to be very healing for them. In the long term. Whether you can do that in the short term, whether you're going to do that every time, Maybe, maybe not. It's not so easy if it's a close relationship that someone is living with you. Much easier if you're meeting up in a cafe with someone once in a while, then you can be that supportive person. 
you know, but it's very difficult if it's in your daily life, much more challenging. Yes, it is. But it's the whole concept of creating a therapeutic, safe environment for someone, you know? So your, your, your line of business is psychology and a big part of healing in psychology is just creating that, that safe space and a therapeutic atmosphere where people feel safe, they can express themselves. And then in that situation, they can actually allow their feelings to come out and they can understand their feelings more and gain insight into their feelings and then heal that way. So whether you can do that or not, well, you know, you have, we, all, we all have our limitations. Yes. And then if, you're, if it's triggering you, again, you'll have your own traumas. So then maybe you need that space. Maybe you have to give yourself that space. Or maybe you need to see someone else who can give you that space, maybe a friend or even a professional who you can talk to about it. I mean, if you want to talk to me in more detail about it, I'll be happy to talk to you in more detail about it, of course. Just be aware of the pain that person's feeling. They're coming from a place of pain. And then they're, in, they're, they're creating that pain in you as well. And then you come from a pain, place of pain. When you've got two people in a relationship and you're both coming from a place of pain, it is, that's, when the, that's when it gets, starts um, going wrong. This is when you still need to sort of figure out a way to sort of contain it. Usually relationships work fine if one person's in pain and the other person's in a place of strength or no pain. Then that other person can be there for that person who's in pain or vice versa, you know? But when you're both triggering each other or you're both not, you know, for whatever circumstance in place of pain, it, it's very difficult there. And that's, and for any kind of relationship, whether it's your, you're a parent or it's your parent or it's a romantic relationship, figuring out a way to get through those times where you're both in a place of pain. It might be an agreement, look, you know, when we're like this, I can't cope you can't cope, let's just have some time apart. If you can get that kind of agreement, not always easy even to get that kind of agreement. <laughs> um, again, it depends on the relationship. But just to say, look, you know, when you, when you, when you do that, it makes me feel like this. Um, or when you do that, I feel like this. You know, the I statements, we can use I statements, not blaming anyone else, we're saying that's what happened, that's how I feel. So how can we help each other through this? You know, what can we do in that situation where you're stressed and then I get stressed and I want to be there for you, but I find it difficult to be there for you. And you want someone to be there for you, but I can't be there for you because I feel repulsed, but I want to be there for you. This is my own stuff I have to deal with as well. You know, this kind of thing. It's not easy. It, it demands a, uh, an exceptional level of maturity, actually, that a lot of people don't always aren't always able to have 